Hi there, Martin here and welcome to this week's turning project video. I hope you're all well. Um, well, as wood turners, we spend quite a lot of time standing at the lathe. So this week I thought I would turn a foot roller or a foot massager like this one. Um, it's about six, in, six, six and a half inches long by about two, two and a half inches wide. And it was a really lovely project to turn, great fun. Um, using a roughing gouge and spindle gouge and a thin parting tool. Uh, sanded down to 600 grit um, and uh, and then finished with uh, shellac and Hampshire sheen. If you haven't done so yet then please do head on over to the website um, where you can read more about what I get up to in the workshop each week as well as read in-depth blogs about each of the projects that I turn and publish um, on YouTube plus a whole load of other stuff as well. In the meantime though I'm going to stop gassing and get on with turning the sycamore foot massager roller. Thanks very much and I'll see you at the end. Starting with a blank, this is a blank of sycamore, um, seven and a half by three inches, which is about 190 millimeters by 75-ish. We'll find the center of each end, just the same as we did in episode one. Get the drive centre. Pull the tool rest up. Slide the blank in and then bring up the tail stock. Line up the centre and just apply some pressure. Give it a little spin. It looks good. It looks, um, it looks like it's spinning nice and squarely and then bring up the tool rest making sure that when the piece spins it doesn't, it doesn't catch on the, on the rest and then lock it all down bring up the tool rest to just below the centre make sure it's nice and square and we're ready to turn it round With the lathe running fairly quickly, face shield on, and we can start making the blank round. And with the blank nice and round like it is now, um, I can see that I've got a little crack running along here. It's not very deep, but I'm just going to dribble some thin CA glue into it um, just to give it some additional support. Now because I want to round off the ends of this, or round off this end, uh, to be the right hand end of the of the foot massager um, I want to put a, a tenon on the left hand end so it can fit into the scroll chuck in a minute now I know that my scroll chuck needs about 12 millimeters so I'm going to find roughly 12 millimeters on that end but I'm going to use the diamond tip parting tool for this as part of this series, um, I'm only going to be using the very basic six tools that come with um, a standard set. And so we need to create a dovetail tenon. So I'm going to start off by squaring off the left hand end as close as I can get to the drive centre. Right, I've now formed a tenon on the left hand end 
um, which is bigger than the minimum size for my chuck jaws and smaller than the maximum size. So let's get it into the chuck and, uh, and get shaping our foot massager. So I've mounted the chuck to the lathe and I'm going to put the tenon into the jaws of the chuck and they fit nicely and I'm just having a little look around. There's a good grip all the way round the piece. I'm going to loosen off the jaws a touch because I know that I've got a centre point here so I can bring the tail stock up and advance the quill into there. A little bit of pressure back through the chuck and then tighten the jaws. That looks good. I'm just going to run the roughing gouge over the surface just to square it off a bit and then we can measure out then we can measure out for uh, for the actual massager itself now i've got a nice nice cylinder here and i want to mark out where i'm going to be putting each of the various parts so we've got two roller parts on each end and then the center of which needs to be narrower than the outside so it rolls nicely along the floor now in the right hand end here where I've got the tail stock um, or the, the live centre rather that's going in a few millimetres so I need to make a mark at the end there where I need to cut down to lose the dimple at the end and then over here I need to make a mark where I'm going to part it off so I'm going to put it about there so I'm going to part it off here and essentially part it off there so I'm going to take off all of this all of this wood here and then I can move the tailstock away um, the rollers I want to be about 15 millimeters I think so there's 15 there and there's 15 there so the rollers are going to be there and there. Then we're going to have a cove and then coming up. Yeah, something like that. But all will be revealed when I start turning it. So on the, on the left hand end here, I'm going to start making my mark where I want to part off.
Now take your calipers and measure the diameter of the cove. And that is, well, call it 50mm, 49.46. And so we need a cove on that side, the same depth. up so you can hear me. Next I'm going to take the inside down with the roughing gouge a few millimetres so it's lower than the outside of the rollers. Next what I want to do is Curve this all over so we've got a nice gentle curve over the top of the actual massager itself, which is in the middle here. So we're going to take a nice curve starting from about here and about here. So about a third of the way down and just smooth that down into the bottom of this cove we made a minute ago. going to take the round nosed scraper with the tool rest a little bit lower so it's just a smidge below the centre or bang on the centre line and smooth that over so get right into the corner here smooth it round on both sides and then follow the contour just to smooth that off and if you watch how I move, I'm not just moving the tool, I'm actually moving myself with the tool to become sort of part of the tool to give it as much stability as possible. And that feels really nice. That's a lovely finish coming off the scraper there. I'm very happy with that. And this wood is also a tiny, tiny little bit wet as well. Next, we are going to go and add some lines down it. So we're going to cut into it a little bit to create some like fins that stick up. So we're going to find the middle of the piece. And it is currently... 160 millimetres. So taking the pencil, half of 160 is 80. So there's there's the centre, and then every 10 millimetres either side of that. And with 
the thin parting tool we're going to make the marks in and I'm going to leave a sharpie mark on the edge of the tool just like that and that will be my depth gauge as to how deep I want to go in to the piece with the tool so we have a nice even depth cut all the way along. So as I cut in I'm going to be looking down the side of the pit, down the side of the tool to make sure that I don't go in any deeper than the outside mark, the outside of the sharpie line, if that makes sense. So uh, that's good, that's nice, I'm happy with that. Um, they're a decent width apart, they're not absolutely bang on because I slipped. Um, on the rollers now, I want to ro round over the ends, round over, round over here, so rather than having sort of a square top, we've got uh, a, rounded, a rounded top. So I'm going to use the spindle gouge for that again, just to, I don't want to take them down any narrower, so I'm just going to roll over carefully on each side just to just to round off the top. Moving the tailstock away, I can turn the tool rest round to give me a better angle at which to take off this little nub here. Lovely. Very nice indeed. Let's look at the finishing now. Right, I've got the extractor fan running and I'm going to start the finishing with 150 grit. Um, and I use cut off pieces um, of the main sandpaper sheet like this. A little piece like this goes a really long way and helps to save a little bit of money um, so you don't use big sheets for sanding fairly small items. So I need to put my dust mask on so I'm not inhaling any of the dust um, so I'll have to leave captions as to what I'm doing. Or I might do a voiceover. One or the other. So same as before, same as last week's um, episode, I'm going to slow the lathe down. It doesn't need to be running at full chat um, for finishing but we just need to slow the lathe down. Now when sanding you don't need a vast amount of pressure on the paper. The idea is to take away any remaining tool marks um, rather than put in more scratches. And then the further you go down the grits, or rather the higher up you go through the grits, each grit removes the scratches from the previous grit. Now if you watch what I'm doing here, I'm, I'm keeping the paper moving all the time which helps reduce the amount of heat that goes into the wood um, and also stops your fingers from burning. And also I will wipe off the piece uh, with the palm of my hand just to take any dust off. 
and then along the bottom of the piece um, I, again I keep the paper moving and use my the edge of my finger to get into the curve of the cove so we get a nice finish across the whole piece as the insides of coves can be tr quite tricky to get hold of I find that using the inside or the outside edge of my finger um, a really good method of, um, of making that uh, contour of the inside of the cove And then when it comes to sanding each of the little individual cuts here, I'm just, I've just folded the paper in half, sticking it into the groove and wiggling it backwards and forwards, which just softens over the top of the cut on each of the, uh, the sort of the little fins, I suppose you could call them. And then I will repeat this process right the way down to 600 grit or until I'm happy with the finish, which on a piece like this would be about 600. Okay, got the piece sanded down to 600 now, and it feels lovely. Really, really nice. But I'm not quite finished with it yet. Um, oops, I need to clean it off with some methylated spirits because I don't want any any dust sealed into sealed into the piece so I'm just going to give it a clean over with methylated spirits or denatured alcohol as it's known in the States that's nice and now I'm going to add shellac sanding sealer down a bit now the shellac is dry I'm going to take a bit of kitchen towel and apply some Hampshire sheen to it you don't need an awful lot of Hampshire sheen to get a really nice finish Get the lathe spinning fairly quickly. And then take the Hampshire sheen, you need very little, and just apply it in a sweeping motion. Leave it a few seconds to dry off. And then buff it. That's really nice. I'm very pleased with how that has turned out. Now I've got to part it off. So I'm going to bring the tool rest up and then with the thin parting tool, wherever I put it, here it is. Get the lathe spinning nice and quick, but not too quick because you don't want to burn the piece. And then start, get the tool rest on centre start to nibble away and then just as you're about to part it off completely support the piece carefully and then part the piece off like so. Now we've got our piece parted off um, we need to finish it off and there are, are a few ways that we can do that. We can either hand sand it, um, or if you have a Jacobs chuck and a bowl sander, you can use the end of the bowl sander in the Jacobs chuck to finish it off. Or if you haven't got a Jacobs chuck, you can put the bowl sander bit into a normal power drill and use it that way. But I've got a Jacobs chuck, so I'm going to use that. Here's the finished piece. I'm really pleased with how it has turned out. I finished the end 
um, on the dr on the lathe as you saw but as I said you can use a power drill if you want to and I finished it down to 400 grit um, rounded off the ends the end of the piece to match the original end as it were and then applied the shellac and the um, Hampshire sheen um, and then just hand buffed it. So all in all I'm very very pleased with how this little project has turned out and I hope you've been inspired to have a go at turning a foot roller stroke massager yourself. If you have then please do turn it and then drop me an email and I can feature your picture in a future video. Um, but for now please do like, share and subscribe um, and if you feel so inclined then please do leave a comment. I reply to all comments as much as I possibly can. Um, that's it for this week folks. I hope you've enjoyed the project um, and I will look forward to seeing you again very soon for another project video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon. Bye for now.